So if you recall, we left off last time talking about the pros and cons of synchrony and synchronous operations. And I talked about how those were kind of the classic ways of doing operation method calls with, with Java objects, making method calls on objects. We talked about how streams and parallel streams typically use synchronous operations. What we're going to do now is talk about the flip side of that, which are asynchronous operations. So we'll explain what asynchrony is, then we'll talk about the pros and cons of asynchrony. So if you recall, one of the things we talked about was limitations with synchronous communication, namely this inability to leverage all the available parallelism on a platform, and also the trickiness of trying to figure out the number of threads to have. So it turns out that async calls or asynchronous calls can alleviate some of the limitations we talked about before. Asynchrony is a means of concurrent programming where the unit of work to be processed has certain properties. Um, for example, in the Android system, there's something called an async task, which we'll cover next semester. And async tasks are objects that, as the name implies, will execute long duration operations asynchronously in the background in one or more threads. So typically, you'll have your user interface which we'll talk about in a second, and then you've got a background thread or threads that carry out operations. The calling thread, which is typically the user interface thread or the UI thread, starts everything in motion. It, it invokes the asynchronous task or the async task, and then the async task can communicate back to the calling thread, to the UI thread, when the object is finished with its processing, when something goes wrong, and it can also give back periodic updates indicating how progress is doing for the long-running computation. So typically, asynchrony means run in a background thread asynchronously with respect to the calling thread. So you don't block the calling thread. There are pros and cons with this approach. So one of the pros of an asynchronous approach is it often makes the system more responsive. Remember, that was one of the, the reactive programming uh, model paradigm goals to make things responsive. So basically, the, the calling thread, the UI thread, the thread that sets the wheels in motion, doesn't block waiting for other requests to complete. So the, the calling thread, the user interface thread, remains responsive because it doesn't, doesn't block. Instead, it blocks in the background. Um, likewise, if you set things up properly and you use things like thread pools, you can have multiple requests running scalably and concurrently on multiple cores. So you can set the wheels in motion, you can run things in the background, and as the, conceivably as the workload goes up, as long as you have enough cores to handle it, you can scale the system elastically and relatively transparently. So those are some of the benefits of asynchronous operations. Naturally, there are some downsides, one of which is unpredictability. So because you're running these things in the background and they're not waiting, the, the UI thread isn't waiting, the response times may not be predictable. They may be responsive. The system may be responsive, but you don't necessarily know how long things will take to run. And one of the other consequences of this unpredictability is that the results, if you have multiple operations that are running in the background asynchronously, the results from those asynchronous operations may come back or may occur in a different order than the original calls were made. So that may or may not be a problem. It may just be perfectly fine as long as you're prepared for it. Um, but if you're not prepared for it, then you can have some kind of nasty surprises because you'll get the results out of order. And if you need things in order, that can be confusing. So either you're going to have to queue things up and then re reorder them before you present them to the user or get people accustomed to getting things out of order. Another tricky part about asynchrony is that debugging can often be a bit complicated. And that's because it's often hard to track errors down because the system is behaving unpredictably. And that's by design, but it doesn't make debugging any easier because things are happening in a somewhat unpredictable and asynchronous way. So you just have to be prepared for how to debug programs in general that run unpredictably. And, and concurrent or parallel programs often have that characteristic, as do asynchronous programs. So that's just a quick overview of the pros and cons of asynchrony. Uh, I think Obviously, since the whole point of this section in the course is to talk about asynchronous processing, we'll just have to uh, kind of suck it up 
and learn the patterns of asynchronous programming in order to be able to handle, in order to be able to take advantage of the benefits, the pros, without getting overwhelmed with some of the cons.